Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, and other spreadsheet programs are very useful in lab and research-based settings to work with larger data sets and perform a number of calculations. Throughout various labs uh, at the university or in a professional sense, you'll be working with data sets and needing to understand how spreadsheets work and how to manipulate data and present things in a graphical format. This uh, short video goes over a few little tips and tricks for how to use uh, Excel starting out and in the latter half of the video goes over how to generate a graph in Excel. So Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet program and in the program you can select all of the different cells, you can highlight whole columns, whole rows, or by this uh, button in the corner, can, you can select absolutely everything in the entire document. And just to uh, show you a little bit better in the video, I'm going to select everything and change the font size just so it's a little bit larger. And you could do things like that individually, just like in other programs, you can change the font settings, the colors, uh, things like that. So what I'm going to do in this first half of the video is look at some data about density. Now, when I type this in, you see that it's uh, spilling across into the other cells. And what you can do in Excel, and this is especially good for when you're setting up a, a table, is highlight this whole area that your wording spreads across and merge and center that. That treats that entire area as one single cell. Now with density calculations, these calculations come from two different measured volumes, mass and volume. Now, you can change the width of these columns or even of the rows by selecting and dragging this across to a specific size or by double clicking to ensure that uh, everything in that row or in that column fits. So I'm going to use just some standard data, particular measurements. So when you're typing in values, you're typing in numbers, they are treated differently in Excel than actual words. You can, you can calculate using a number, you can add and subtract them. You can't do that using words. So Excel is built to recognize when something is a number and when something is not. This is important when you're working with numbers that have units associated with it. This 9.23 is justified on the right hand side. This is telling you that Excel believes this is a number. If I was to put the number with the unit, 9.23, grams, it's now uh, aligned on the left-hand side. This is, or Excel is treating this like a word. You can't uh, manipulate or calculate that using 9.23 G. So you'd have to label everything either in the columns, or in the column next to the actual property. So I'm going to go through and utilize some of these values to calculate density 
as an example and use these numbers to show you how to manipulate some data and perform a couple of functions in Excel. So when you're looking at Excel and using Excel, you can type things in directly. By setting an equal sign at the start, you're telling Excel that in this particular cell, there is a calculation. You're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, or performing a number of different functions to the different numbers in Excel. So in here, the density of something is equal to the grams divided by the volume in milliliters. So I have can select my cell containing the mass value, a slash indicating divide, and I'm dividing that by the volume. So this gives me 0 0.9121 grams per milliliter. Excel can show you as many significant figures as you would like it to. And the, these two buttons at the, uh, at the top, increase or decrease decimal, can change how many significant figures are being shown. A very useful feature in Excel, uh, especially when you're utilizing data, is that small square in the lower right hand corner when you select a cell. When you uh, drag your cursor over that, you'll notice that the cursor changes. And now I can select this and I'm dragging this down across the rest of the data. And what I'm doing is I'm auto filling these other cells to utilize this other data. In this top one, I'm looking at uh, columns D and E, row five. When I move that down, it's columns D and E, but now it's row six, just where I wanted it uh, to calculate. So now I have the density for all of these different trials. And you can do this with words as well, so that way, um, you can go through and just type something in once or type in a function or a calculation once along with all of the data and then drag that down to auto calculate everything. Other types of calculations that Excel can do are built in functions in uh, the program itself. So to total up these volumes to figure out what the sum of these values uh, is, you can add each individual value together, or you can use a function built into Excel. And there are a lot of functions built into Excel. When you start with an equal sign and start typing a word or a letter, you'll be given a number of different functions. One of them is the sum function. This just simply adds the values together. So when you're starting a function, you'll type in the function itself, open a parentheses, and it kind of guides you along. You want to select number one, number two, etc. So by selecting a space and dragging down, selecting this whole area, it's telling Excel to give the total or the sum of all of that, all of the values from cell D5 through cell D8. And then I can close the parentheses. And that gives the total of this column. There are a couple of other functions the average function, so this will give me an average value of those different uh, data sets, or a standard deviation.
Again, I can take all of these and drag them over. And now it's totaling uh, the volume column, figuring out the average volume, the standard deviation of the volume and of the densities uh, as well. So there are a number of different ways to calculate things in Excel. Um, the last part that I'm going to show in terms of these more simple calculations and tricks in utilizing Excel is when you're dragging things across and it doesn't, uh, when you're trying to drag values or uh, calculations across where you want to keep one of those numbers the same. In each of these cases, every time I moved the value or dragged the equation down, the row changed. And in here, the rows stayed the same, but the columns changed. So here a percent error would be the difference between the measured value and the correct value divided by the correct value again, and then all multiplied by 100%. So here, you can change the format of the value itself. You can change this into a percentage and I can increase the decimal places. But when I drag this down, there are some errors that come into play. Here I am looking at F5, so right here, and I'm utilizing this G3 value, the 0 0.9000 grams per milliliter. I want that value to stay the same even though I'm looking at these other three rows. So what you can do in this is the dollar sign before each column and row will make sure that that column or row remains constant. And a shortcut to this is the F4 button. So now this is cell F5 minus cell G3 divided by cell G3. So it didn't change anything with the actual value, but now when I drag this down, In the other rows, that F6 value, that changed like I wanted it to, but that G3 value, that remained the same. So when you're working with Excel, you're utilizing these numbers, these data sets, you can go through and look at all of these uh, different functions that it has and type in different, um, different calculations and set up different tables. The next set or the next part of this video is then going to go over when you have a data set and you have the whatever calculations are ready to be performed, then you go and prepare a graph. The next segment in this video that I'd like to go over is preparing a graph in Excel. When preparing a graph, you can do this with a few individual points or with a full data set of a number of different points. And you can select all of them together and create a full graph. The graph that I'm going to make in this tutorial is a comparison between the three different temperature units of Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. 
So when you're typing in data into Excel, if you have a pattern emerging, many times Excel can figure this out. So I have negative 20, negative 15. I'm increasing by increments of five. So by selecting both of these boxes and dragging down, it is repeating this pattern, increasing by five degrees Fahrenheit every single time. Next, I can use the known relationship between Fahrenheit and Celsius to convert between the two. The Celsius value would be the Fahrenheit value minus 32, and all of this is divided by 1.8. In uh, Excel, when you're looking at calculations, the parentheses are very important. So that way it does exactly what you're wanting it to do. You want to calculate certain things before um, other functions. So now this is the value in Celsius. And to convert that to Kelvin would be the Celsius value plus 273. And I can drag these formula all the way down. So now I have these data sets of different temperatures, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. When you're generating a graph in Excel, you can go to insert. And most times, the graph that would be most relevant in this course and in many other courses could be or would be this. This is a scatter plot. And this is a kind of, it, it's like a line graph, but in a scatter plot, you are choosing what the X values are and what the Y values are. So I'm going to select that where I can see each individual data point. Once you have the box where you're going to have your graph, you can select the specific data and add the series. Now, what I'm going to be graphing is Kelvin on the X axis and either the Fahrenheit or Celsius values on the Y axis. So for this first data set, this is going to be the relationship between Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So my series name, I can select exactly what I want to have. And I am specifically selecting my X values. I want Kelvin on the X axis so I can select and highlight this whole segment. This is gen, uh, selecting 15 different X data points. And I can select my Y values in Fahrenheit. Again, selecting all 15 of these data points. So now I have this graph of Kelvin versus Fahrenheit. You can also add more than one line on the same graph. And to do this, you're, you can add a second series. And in this time, I'm graphing the Celsius values using the same X values for Kelvin and now the Celsius values for the y-axis. So I have these two different series, these two different lines graphed on the same graph. In this particular case, I was looking at uh, graphing them using the same x values, but you can, since in a scatter plot, you are the one selecting what the X values actually are. You can select whole different segments and different uh, data sets so long as the axis remains the same. If you're so, uh, so long as in this case, you are graphing Kelvin 
on the x-axis, it wouldn't matter what you were actually graphing on the y-axis then. So when a graph is created, now it needs to be properly labeled. And in a graph or in Excel, you can add the individual chart elements one by one, or there are some pre-built quick layouts that you can select and that will bring in the various different things that you would want to label a graph. Every graph needs to have a title and each axis needs to be labeled. If there's more than one data set on the, or on the graph itself, each one needs to be clearly indicated which, uh, what that actually is. So I have my title, and my axes titles. So my x-axis is the temperature in Kelvin. All the axes need, uh, if there is a specific unit associated with these values, that needs to be indicated. And on my y-axis, That is the value in Fahrenheit for this blue line or Celsius for this orange line. The other thing you can do with a graph is by selecting one of the data sets. You can either add the chart element or right click on the data set and add a trend line. These are straight lines. These are linear data sets. So I can add a linear trend line to each of these. That is the overall trend that this data shows. And by selecting these and looking at the format trend line on the right hand side, you can display the equation on the chart. And this equation is the equation for that trend line. Y equals MX plus B, where M is the slope, B is the intercept. So these are the equations that relate Fahrenheit and Celsius to the Kelvin temperature scale. Um, another useful feature that Excel has is when calculating the slope or the intercept from a data set like this. On the graph, it will only display so many significant figures, so many digits, but you can calculate the slope or the intercept to a much higher level of precision using an actual function in Excel. So I can select uh, to equal my slope. And this is asking first for the known Ys. What are the Y values of the data set you're looking at? So I can select the entire Y value data set and then a comma. And now it's asking for the known X values. And in this case, it was the Kelvin temperature unit close the parentheses, and I have my slope. The intercept can also be found in that same way, where I have my known y's, comma, and all of my known x values. So this is for the Fahrenheit data set. And you can even set this equal where the word is actually the same in, uh, by using an, an equation, an equal sign. But as I mentioned previously in the previous uh, data set about the density, if I want it to look at the Celsius version, 
I can do the same exact thing. I can highlight Celsius and Kelvin when calculating the slope, but the Kelvin is also going to be the same value. I'm not going to want to change that, but I want to move the, the Y values over to the next column. So by highlighting the Kelvin values and putting the dollar sign in front of both the column and the row, that is holding those values constant. So I can do the same thing for intercept and now can select all of these three cells, drag over, and I have the same information for now, the Celsius column. One of the last things I'll show about working with the graph is you can take this and move the chart to a completely different spot. So now you have it in a larger area to work with a little bit more. You can move the specific equations around, and you can change the uh, kind of formatting of the actual graph itself. So that way you can, it can appear a little bit more uh, professional and more aesthetically pleasing. If you don't like one of the labels on here, you can also even select one in particular and delete those just so that you're showing the overall temperature comparison or your your overall graph for the data that you're selecting. So I hope that this uh, crash course helps in preparing graphs in this course and in other courses and that you're able to use Excel or any other sort of spreadsheet program to be able to calculate some data sets and prepare graphs for the course.